So this is the second part of 3.4. Um, sometimes when we have a polynomial in factored form, it might have the same factor more than one time. So we call that multiplicity of a zero. If the polynomial p of x has a factor x minus a n times, we say that x equals a is a zero of multiplicity n. That's a lot of words. I think the examples will make it to make sense. So if we look at this polynomial, this x plus 1, the a value or the zero is negative 1. Uh, here the a value or the zero is 2 and here the zero is 4. So notice what it says on the right. x equals negative 1 is a zero of multiplicity 2. So multiplicity, fancy word for saying this here, this power here, there's two of them. Uh, x minus 2 is a zero of multiplicity 1 and x equals 4 is a zero of multiplicity 3. Uh, multiplicity represents the number of times a factor is repeated. We're going to try something out here. Let's do a fairly straightforward graph here. All these ones here, I'm going to graph here y is equal to x minus 1 to the 1 power and here we're going to do y is equal to, I'll see if I can get this, y is equal to uh, x minus 1 squared uh, y is equal to x minus 1 cubed so of multiplicity 3 and this one will be y is equal to x minus 1 to the fourth so I'll go over to Desmos and try these out and then you can just sketch them in as you see them so popping over here to Desmos okay so we've got already this uh, y is equal to x minus 1 to the 1th then it's not too surprising we get uh, a straight line so you can write that in for the first one uh, what happens if I change this one to squared okay so now not too surprising oh I gotta make that uh, a power part here so we go to the power of 2 there we go so that can you draw that shape in now so you'll notice that while previously it crossed at 1 here it touches but bounces back doesn't it just to go back for a second so if I just erase that and say you know to the power of, of 1 it crosses at that point if I change this to the power of 2 it touches but doesn't cross at the same point hmm I wonder what happens if I do 3 so here I'll go to the power of 3 so here it again touches and crosses just like when it was y is equal to x equals x minus 1 to the 1th power so sketch this one in for the cube so this has a weird little change direction twice here uh, you don't have to know this but it's called an inflection point kinda cool so now we'll change it to the fourth power and there we go it looks a lot like y is equal to x minus 1 all squared except for this part kinda gets flattened out Okay, we don't have to, but uh, you can probably guess what happens if we go to the fifth power. It, again, it's got that inflection point. What happens if we go to uh, the sixth power? A lot like. So you see this pattern repeats and repeats uh, with, between the odd and the even. Okay, so this is how I sketched in those four graphs. Uh, you'll notice this behavior, right? When it's odd, it crosses. When it's an even number, uh, a multiplicity of two or four in our examples it bounces bounces off or touches but doesn't cross here it talks about a bounce uh, okay so here's some example examples of multiplicities this is uh, x minus one uh, squared let's take a look at what that one would look like or I guess we we did that one already didn't we can we guess what this one's gonna look like x plus two uh, with a cubic. Well, if it's x plus 2, it's going to be left 2, like this. We're going to have a, a 0 of x equals negative 2 with a multiplicity of 3. So here's my negative 2, and it'll have this kind of a shape. Uh, I didn't do a, a very good it almost has a bit more of that kind of a loop to it so uh, it's it's hard to get the perfect shape like this and we don't shouldn't worry about it too much as long as you have the the crossing or touching in this case you're good to go alright so example number two it says sketch the following graphs 
and the first one asks for what the degree is. So looking at the degree, if we were to multiply everything out, uh, we would get the first term would be x to the power of what if we were to multiply all this out. I don't mean to say zero, I mean x to the power of what. So this would give us an x squared multiplied by another x is we would get a, of degree 3, which is odd. Okay, uh, the leading coefficient, well, since there's no negative out in front, the leading coefficient would be positive. So if you have an odd with a positive leading coefficient, uh, you know, you essentially you get this kind of a shape. So it's going to be uh, down in quadrant number three and up in quadrant number one. The zeros, well, we'll have a zero of uh, here plus one and here a negative two. Now the zero will be plus one with a multiplicity of two and then a negative two. Uh, I don't have to write it but I will this time I'll say multiplicity of one. In other words uh, this two here is why this is a two and this one that isn't written there is why that's a one over there. Okay, so the y-intercept, if I put in a, a zero for x, I would get negative one squared, which is positive one, times two, so that would be two. So in other words, if I put in a zero minus one, all squared, multiplied by zero plus two, I would get 1 times 2, I would get 2. So that is my y-intercept. The intervals, so if I did a sine diagram here, so I've got uh, negative 2, and I've got uh, plus 1. So I know it's going to be positive over here, and I know it's going to be negative over here. Uh, so let's think here. The, the plus 1 is a multiplicity of 2. So in other words, it's going to bounce off but not cross here. So if that's the case, it will still be positive here. So like I said before, um, if everything was of degree 1, it would be changing signs every time. Uh, let's just test this out. If I plug in a number between negative 2 and, and positive 1, 0 is an easy one, then what do I get? Well, if I plug in a 0, I'll get negative 1 squared, which is 1, uh, times 2 is 2. So I get a positive value over here. So that works. All right, so let's do a sketch here using all that information we have. So my y-intercept was plus 2. I've got a negative 2 over here and a plus 1 over here. And my general shape is going to be uh, coming up, up over there. It has to cross there bounces off of the one and then goes off that direction over there. Ah, just for fun, we could even pop over to on any of these ones. I recommend if you're doing the work and if you have a laptop or if you've installed uh, Desmos or any other the graphing things in your uh, in your phone or your iPod Touch or whatever you have, you can use any technology you want while you're doing the homework to, to kind of check your work along the way. So if I plug that in, let's see what we get. Okay, so I typed it in for you, and yeah, here's here's the graph that we get. So it looks just like we wanted. You'll notice that the maximum, I, I think I drew the maximum at, right at that y-intercept, but it should have been before it. But again, like I said before, uh, we don't have to worry too much about that. Okay, so let's go on to the next one here. Minus x times x plus 2 all cubed. The degree here, well, once we'd multiply all the x's, we'd have 1x here, and we'd have 3 more x's for here, so we would have 4 uh, it would be of degree 4, so that is even. The leading coefficient, well, this negative would make it negative, so I'm going to say negative. So what does the end behavior look like? Well, when you've got your 4 it's and it's negative, uh, so perhaps something like this, it depends uh, on other things, but that's often what the degree 4 looks like. We're definitely going to get uh, a down in quadrant number 1, 2, 3, and a down again in quadrant number four. The zeros. Okay, so uh, when is this uh, zero? When x is zero? When is this zero? When x is negative two? 
So our two zeros are zero uh, with a multiplicity of one and negative two with a multiplicity of three. Uh, and the y-intercept, so if I plug in a zero for x, this is going to give me zero, so everything will give, will turn out zero. So the y-intercept will be zero, right? So if I say negative zero times zero plus two cubed, well, it's like that, you know, you can multiply as many things as you want. If you say times zero at the end, it's zero. So if we're drawing the, uh, the sine diagram here, so I would say the two places that I want to put in here are the negative two and then the zero. Uh, I know that it's going to be down in quadrant three and down in quadrant four, so I have a negative here and a negative there. Uh, at negative two, I have a multiplicity of three, which means it does change signs there. So I do get a positive, right? So, and then it turns negative again. So what does this look like when I graph? It has a y-intercept of zero and at negative two and at zero. And it's going to come from the negative. It's going to go up like this. And then it has that inflection point look when it goes this way. This behavior right here, this kind of funny looking behavior that's there, um, instead of just having a line that crosses, that's because if it's a multiplicity of three. Okay. Multiplicity of three. That's that kind of a look to it. All right. In fact, I could even type that in again for us. Okay, I was just about to go graph and then I realized I made a big error, didn't I? So here's the error that I made. The zero has a multiplicity of one and the negative two has a multiplicity of three. So I'm going to erase this one. So this is uh, this zero should be a simple crossing one and that funny looking thing should be at the negative two. So let's let's redraw this a little bit here. So let's do some erasing. I can even erase that. So uh, at negative two, at negative two should be where I should have that neat look, kind of look to it. And it goes like this and then back up again. There you go. And then at zero is where it's just a simple kind of a crossing. That's better. And now if I go and take a look at the, the graphing of it on the graphing software, uh, there we go. So we have that sort of a feature there. So this is that multiplicity of three look, and that's that multiplicity of one. So again, it crosses at those two points. So check your work on some type of graphing uh, technology and that will really be helpful. Okay, example number three says, the zeros of a function are negative two, three, and five. Write an equation to represent this function. So uh, a zero of negative two, will, the term would be x plus two, uh, the, with a zero of three would be x minus three and the zero of five would be x minus five. Because it says equation, you definitely have to have an equal sign. And it's our choice what to put here. Traditionally, we either put y or f of x. So we'll say y is equal to that. Oh, we need another bracket. All right, example number four. The zeros of a polynomial uh, are zero and negative four with a multiplicity of two. Write an equation to represent this function. Well, I'll go with f of x this time just for a change. So the, the, a zero of, of zero would simply be an x. And a zero of negative four would be x plus four with a multiplicity of two, meaning I put a square there, write an equation to represent this function. Okay, so there's your homework and uh, I will see you in class.